Hi everyone, it's Talia and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. I actually cannot explain how excited I am to film this video purely because it was a great excuse for me to order McDonald's. I haven't had, actually no. <laughs> I was about to say I haven't had a McDonald's in so long, which is an absolute lie because I actually had some McDonald's chips yesterday. <laughs> but I haven't had a proper McDonald's meal since, I want to say like February. So it's been like two months since I've had proper McDonald's and I'm so excited to dig into this. As you guys know by now, I do live in France, so I thought that we could try some different foods than what we get at home, I have a ketchup because I feel like we haven't spoken in a long time. So I got a McFlurry, it's a Kit Kat McFlurry which I'm so excited about but it's gonna have to go in the fridge, I don't have enough space in my freezer so it's kind of already melting, it's just gonna have to do in the fridge. And then I got a Minute Maid orange juice which is really not something that I would normally get but I thought why not, I don't think we get this in England so so strange drinking out of these lids. It's obviously a good thing because there's like no plastic, but it's very odd. <laughs> and then this is the exciting stuff. I decided to get fries, which is really boring, I know, because they do actually do potato wedges in France, but I just really wanted some McDonald's chips. Although, they're very cold, but oh well. The first thing I got was a croc McDough, I believe is what they call it. Obviously, it's meant to be like a croc monsieur. Um, she looks pretty sad. Look at that. Basically just like a cheese and ham toasty on like an inside out bun. It's something. It's given something. Okay, let's give it a taste test. The taste, she's not bad. I think obviously where it's cold and gone a little bit stale. It's a little bit hard to swallow. I don't know if I get one of these again from McDonald's because this was like nearly four euros. I definitely don't think it's worth four euros. I also got these sauces. I don't know how to pronounce it. So it probably doesn't even want to try, but the packaging looks like our sweet and sour. I think it smells like our sweet and sour. So I'm assuming it's the same. Mm. I really missed sweet and sour sauce. I really wanted to get chicken nuggets, but I thought you guys wouldn't appreciate me. Well, maybe you would. I don't know. I don't film food videos anymore. I didn't think you guys would appreciate me eating chicken nuggets when I could get a croc mcdough and a chicken big tasty now I don't think we get these in England I never know we get big tasties but I'm pretty sure the only big tasties that we get are either the beef ones or the beef with bacon ones so I got it in the hopes that we don't have it but I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments wow that is <laughs> that is a large burger so I think the only difference is maybe the cheese because obviously they have much fancier cheeses in France. I mean, it doesn't taste of anything. And the chicken. I am gonna take out my tomatoes because I do not enjoy tomatoes. Love ketchup, let me know if anyone is the same, but tomatoes, no thank you. I mean, honestly, it's good. I wouldn't say it's amazing. Like I probably actually just save my money and get like a normal chicken sandwich. It's okay, a little bit dry. A common theme here is dry and cold. So I'm gonna get out some mayo and some ketchup. I've got ketchup for my fries. Oh, I didn't shake it. <laughs> and my McDough. Is it a McDough? Is it actually called that? My Croc McDough. Yeah. And some mayo for my burger. And we can now get into this video now that the taste tests are done. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed by the McDonald's. You know, I was really looking forward to it and it's cold and not a 10 out of 10, but honestly, it will have to do. As I mentioned earlier, the main reason for me filming this video was to have a catch up because I'm aware that I feel like on YouTube, I'm like barely even here anymore. And I'm surprised that there's people that even still watch my videos because I feel like once you upload one day a week on YouTube, I feel like people forget about you and like they don't know who you are, but I just feel like you, I don't want to say it on YouTube, but like I feel like YouTube, she's coming to an end. I just don't think, I don't know. There's like no real incentive for people to upload on YouTube anymore. Like I just, I think YouTube might have had its time and I'm an avid YouTube watcher. 
And recently, I've become more of a TikTok gal. I love uploading on TikTok. I love watching TikToks. So if you guys want to like really know what's happening in my life, go check out my TikTok. It's basically like my YouTube channel, but in short form content. I feel like Instagram is hard because everyone on Instagram wants to be like aesthetic, myself included. But on TikTok, like you can, I feel like it's one of those platforms where you can just be yourself like you can on YouTube. So yeah, go for my TikTok if you want to follow my life. I try to upload it like at least three times a week over there. And obviously it's all real time because TikTok, you can make it like that. But YouTube takes a while. So the main question I have is, what is your injury? What's happening? Are you okay? Because I basically posted on my TikTok that I was injured and I posted on my Instagram as well. So there we go. I'm injured, guys. I've hurt my knee, but I'm completely okay. I've been signed up off work for a week, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna go crazy staring at these four walls for the next week but i know that in the long run obviously it's good for me i've got painkillers anti-inflammatories the annoying thing is is like there wasn't actually anything that happened to injure me it was just i think it's just like a bit of like wear and tear like i've been dancing a lot in the last three months and i think my main thing is i've never actually tapped so much in my life and tap is a very like shock thing to the knees so i can only really put it down to that but yeah i'm sure i'll be fine and thank you for all the well wishes and when people warn you about the paperwork and doctors in France. Wow, they really, really mean it. It has been an absolute palaver to sort out the paperwork and find a doctor, but I managed to sort it all out. So I'm very, very happy that everything's sorted. I posted off my paperwork today. So now I can really just like focus on recovering for the next week. What does a normal day in the life working at Disneyland Paris look like for you? A normal day in the life is probably wake up at like 7.38, chill in bed, on TikTok, I need to probably start reading or something. Cause I feel like it cannot be good for me to wake up and go on my phone straight away. But I will normally have my coffee, sort myself out, brush my teeth, go to the toilet, get ready for the day. And then I normally leave here at like, to be exact, like 10.06, 10.07 in the morning. Our call time isn't actually until 11.15. I like to be doing my makeup by 10.45 in the morning. And then I'm normally all done by 11.15. So I can just relax and take my time. And then we normally have like a warm up, a mise en place, place, place. <laughs> really embarrassing myself right now. I accidentally said good evening to someone at 10.30 this morning in French. It's not going well for me. Mise en place, I think is how they pronounce it. But it's basically where we just like block our dancers in the show. So like we know where we're standing. And then our first show starts at one. It's about 35 minutes. And then we normally have notes after the first show. Second show is at 2.05. And then third show, 3.10. Then we break for an hour. And then our first show back after lunch is 5.25. And then our final show of the day is 6.00. 30. And I'm normally out of work by 7.15 on the bus on the way home, have dinner and go to bed normally at like 11.15. Rinse and repeat. Oh, I also have a shower. Of course. Guys, I really don't know how I feel about Big Tasty. It's the sauce. I'm not like, I'm not feeling the sauce. I do just need to have mayo. How have you found Disney this time compared to last time? If you'd asked me this question probably like a week ago, I would say it's gone so much better, absolutely loving it, having the time of my life. Although for the last week I've been feeling really homesick, and then I injured myself, and then I had to deal with loads of difficult situations. And one of the reasons that I didn't like being here last time was the whole doctor situation, like talking to people. And I'm trying really hard to learn French, like I can definitely understand French a lot more like i actually get a lot of conversations now can't speak it to save my life because i can't do the accent but the last few days have been very very hard that is why i'm just so relieved that it's all done and dusted and now i can really just focus on resting i have actually had a really lovely time living here like a lot of the time i've actually like not wanted to go home really like i've just been really enjoying it i love living on my own like yeah i just I just love it and I've met so many like lovely, lovely people. Like I know that I've made friends for life here and we've only been here for three months. I'm really thoroughly enjoying myself. So it's so much better to last time. I'm literally not anxious, nothing. A lot of people are asking me what I'm doing after my contract at Disney. Still got a long time here, guys. I think I've got like five, wait, what's the month? It's April, May, June, July, August, September. I've got over five months left. So I have a long time to be deciding what I'm going to be doing. But in this industry, it is just so hard to know what's next for you. Like, I definitely want to continue dancing. Like, I've decided, like, this is it. Like, this is exactly what I've wanted to do with my whole life. But finding what to do 
really is the million dollar question. When I first moved out here, I was like, thank the Lord I'm not doing a cruise. I, I don't think I can ever do a cruise. But since living here, I kind of feel like I could do one. Like I'd be away from home for a long time and I'm very lucky where obviously I only live in France so I can pop home whenever I want and obviously on a cruise I cannot do that. But I feel like I'd love to experience it just like the one time. I feel like it'd be such a great life experience. So if I'm honest I really don't know what's next for me. I'd like to think a cruise depends what they're looking for. It's such a hard industry. I'd also love to be in the West End but a lot of the West End jobs nowadays are singing and dancing and acting and I'm just not a triple threat. I don't think I'll ever be a triple threat. And dancing really is the thing that I want to do. I don't want to sing. I don't want to act. I just want to dance. What are your plans for your birthday? So as you guys are watching this, it's my birthday on Saturday, which is honestly crazy. I'm going to be 24 years old. I know there's going to be people sat there like, how the hell are you 24? I don't know. I honestly do not know. And the fact that I started this YouTube channel when I was 18 and now 24. I was a completely different human back then. Of course, six years, oh my God. Six years ago, I was 18. I'm not quite too sure how to feel about that. But I actually don't have lots planned for my birthday. I'm not a big partier, as you guys can probably gather from my personality. I'm, I'm such a chilled, like, don't wanna be out past 10 kind of gal. So I'm actually just gonna go out for dinner on my actual birthday with a few of my friends. I am working, so I'll be at work all day. It's actually my first day back after my time off from my injury. So I feel like it's just gonna be such an exciting day. I'm gonna be able to see all my friends. I mean, I can obviously see my friends during this week, but you guys get what I mean. It's just gonna be so weird waking up on my birthday on my own, without my family, without Aiden. It's just gonna be the strangest of things. Speaking of Aiden, a lot of people are really curious over what Aiden does because I always mention how like he's at my house. Obviously in my last video, I went home and surprised my family and Aiden was like coming over to stay. So I think some people are confused by what he does. So before I get into that, I'm actually just gonna clean up my station because I've made a mess. I cleaned my flat today and I made a mess already. Oh, I'm actually gonna get out my McFlurry. You can start eating that and answering the rest of the questions. So I got a Kit Kat McFlurry. It's really nothing to look at. It does not look like here. I also paid 25 cents extra for chocolate sauce, which seems like a bit of a rip off. I feel like at home, everything is just included in one price. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure if I like Kit Kat on a McFlurry. It was between Kit Kat or Lotus and I feel like I should have got Lotus. I feel like you guys would be screaming at your TV screens or phones or whatever you watch YouTube on and telling me I should have got the Lotus. Back to Aiden. So Aiden actually still lives at my house without me. I'm very jealous of him. He actually stays there Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, so three nights a week purely because his work is closer to my house. His football training is close to my house. So it's just really convenient for him. My mum loves the fact that he's there, keeps her company. Obviously my brother Brandon is also there, but my mum is such a mum. Like she loves having people around and people in her house. So my mum also loves Aiden to death. Like honestly, she I think she roots for him more than she roots for me because she loves him, which is honestly, the only thing I've ever really wanted in life. Like Brandon, my brother, literally texted Aiden today and was like, hey, like, been playing xbox like i love it so much and i'm so happy aiden feels like he's one of the family at my house so yeah that's what aiden does he stays there a couple of nights a week guys i'm actually so upset about this kit kat situation i i want to eat the kit kat just to get it out of the way so i can enjoy the ice cream what's your favorite thing about living in paris at the moment hmm it's a hard question i feel like recently like the people the people that I'm around every day are honestly like the best people I've ever come across in my life. Like when I say I cry with laughter every single day at work, I mean it. The people I'm friends with are hilarious. And it's also so nice that so many of us live away from home because if someone's had a bad day, you know exactly how they're feeling. Like there's always someone that you can call on, that you can text, like honestly the best experience. But I feel like every week there's something new that I appreciate so much about living here. So. Next week will probably be something different. Favourite French snacks, drinks and food you've come across since living in France? It's a great question. And it's honestly a question I don't think I have an answer to. Because I haven't actually, like, 
eaten much French food. That sounds really bad. Like I've got French foods, like French branded foods that I really enjoy, but not so much like French food. <laughs> I don't know if it makes any sense. Like for example, there's a brand out here called Lou, L-Y, L-Y, L-U, and Prince. And anything they sell is incredible. Like they sell a lot of like the biscuits, the chocolate, good stuff. They also sell really good cereal bars. I absolutely love their cereal bars. I don't know how I'm going to cope without them when I move back home. Like I used to think that brunch bars by Cabbage are really good. No. Lou and Prince ones are incredible. Something I'm not so keen on, which I actually think is a bit of a surprise, is Milka. I don't really like Milka chocolate, Milka things. So that's actually been a really big surprise. Guys, this McFlurry is so melted. I'm basically just drinking it right now. And it's proven really hard when I'm trying to avoid the Kit Kat balls because they're not cute. I love Kit Kats, but these, mm-mm. Not so much. Okay, guys, I'm all done. In fact, I should probably wrap up this video here. Otherwise, it's going to be way too long. But I hope you all did enjoy this catch-up and seeing some French McDonald's. Honestly, I wasn't too impressed with the French McDonald's. Like, the selection of foods, I wasn't that impressed with. It seems pretty just, like, box standard, like, different kinds of burgers. Like, there was nothing too interesting on it. Obviously, if you guys aren't already, then make sure you subscribe to my channel, follow me over on Instagram, TikTok, the lot. I'm a lot more active on my other platforms if you do want to keep up with my life in Paris. And I shall see you very soon in a new video. Bye!